She's got the biggest brain we know of, Rosanna. <laughs> Neil deGrasse Tyson, astrophysicist, uh, Frederick P. Rose, director at the Hayden Planetarium, and not only does he understand the universe, he understands uh, talk shows. In fact, he's the host of his own talk show. It's called Star Talk. Uh, season four premieres Sunday, October 1st at 11 o'clock on Nat Geo. He has all kinds of people who have nothing to do with outer space I, on his show. I love it. Uh, nice to have you back well, on thanks. Today, it's been a while. York. You guys don't call. You don't write. We, you don't text. No, you've been busy. Okay. You've been busy from everything from eclipse to hurricanes. Yeah, the eclipse. Oh, yeah, the eclipse. You know, that that one took look, everybody out. Did you look with your naked eye at the eclipse? I got, I, you know, I got filters and stuff for when you need it. But once the sun is completely covered, take out all the filters and bask in the solar you corona. Did. You did. And, well, if you know what you're doing, yeah. Right. Okay. <laughs> Rosanna was out there on the street telling people, don't look. We know how to look at the sun without looking. You know how looking. bad that got? There was a group that didn't even want to look at it on the TV out of fear that the eclipse rays would come through the TV and blind you. It's That's how bad it got for some people out there. Yeah, some of the hype was provided by oh. my friend here. Look, all right, look, can we talk about right now because I think a lot of us are concerned. Are we seeing more hurricanes now or is this just part of the natural phenomenon of the world? Well, there's a lot of randomness or more formally, there's a, there's a stochastic nature to the existence of one hurricane versus many. Wait, and, you said stochastic. Yeah, yeah. What it's, does that it's, mean? it's a more formal way to quantify randomness, okay? Mm -hmm. And so, so weather has strong stochastic elements. So there's a limit to how far in the future you can predict the existence of a storm. Or, or Now, we do pretty well with hurricanes now, and people have an understanding of uncertainties. They say, here's the path, but here's the range over that path. So that's, a, that's, a, that's progress in terms of communicating uncertainty. So the, the issue is you can't say this hurricane is because of climate change or global warming. You can't say that because That's what of the, the I disconnect. Was looking for you to... But you can, you can make a broader statement and say with climate change and a rise in temperature, there is more moisture comes out of the oceans into the atmosphere, and that enables more of what we think of as weather. When you have water in the air, it comes out as snow, sleet, hail, rain, whatever. And so what you also have is an increase in the intensity of what a hurricane can be. And so, so yeah, I think it's just bad luck this year that you've got so many in a row. Um, you, want to have to, you have to step back and look at trend lines. Well, it's pretty wild, interesting though. that you're th saying it's bad luck rather than, you know, we should be fearful, this is a, the future of the world. Yes, we should be fearful, but not specifically because of this evidence. That's all I'm saying. Man, yeah. you understand space, you understand the weather, talk shows, and game shows. Oh! Now check out uh, this, Rosanna. Oh, oh, wait, no, you didn't. Yes. No, you didn't. Yeah, yes, we did. <laughs> He was on the Family Feud show, Celebrity Family Feud, with his family. Take a look. <laughs> uh, Neil? What's up? Your boy did pretty good. Four. Uh -huh. Try again. Five. Tell me another word for cry. Weep. Tell me another word for cry. You said... All right, we didn't get to see his family. Oh, yeah, yeah. Which I have to say was the reason why I wanted to see this. But survey says you guys did a pretty oh, good job. Yeah, the family. Okay. Your son, 16 years yeah, old, 16, has yes. got a, a great big personality. Yeah, he does. Bubbling over with personality. <laughs> yes, yes. And he was your, your partner in when you got down to the, in, final. In the final. In the final pairing. So his, his answers were on that left column and my one on the right column. We tested combinations of us. Yeah, there we go. Uh, to see who would be the best because you have to you need some overlap but not too much overlap and you need the, the resonance so of all combinations of the five of us he and I in our in our testing uh, phase uh, uh, figured that out can I yeah. see you with uh, mr. Harvey again because that was quite a vest you were wearing um, oh it was a little loud uh, I, was, I figured this <laughs> celebrity family feud I could just wear a loud vest I have to say I must have seen the rerun about 20 times oh, yeah, and there every it is. time I enjoyed it a little bit more I just that's a custom that's a custom vest by the way and yeah you couldn't buy that at the store no no, no, yeah. It's got no, all the hey, I said that. Yeah, he said. He said you, you. What he really wanted to say is you would never want to buy. <laughs> <laughs> I felt. I felt that vibe. You just <laughs> but it was great to see you with your family because we always yeah, see you. you at the planetarium. You well, because my my professional life is not about my family, right? That they got their own thing, and I'm right. just trying to help you learn the universe. Uh, but yeah, yeah. It's great that you are so accessible, by the way. I mean, you are out and about. You've mastered all kinds of mediums. I want to talk at the talk, the talk show real quick, yeah. and then ask you some very deep questions about the universe. Br bring it on. Uh, fourth right. season of Star Talk is Sunday, October first. 11 mm -hmm. o'clock.
guest uh, number uh, one? Nat Geo. Mm -hmm. uh, Nat Geo, who's the first guest? Uh, I think it's uh, Lance Armstrong. And oh. Armstrong. Yeah. Ooh, the, the bike ride, the controversial bike rider. How did you get him out of, you know, hiding? Well, so, so, yeah, so there's, there's a clip. That, well, well, so the other, is, uh, is that a live clip that we see there? So that had uh, Kareem yeah. Jabbar is another guest, and uh, Katy Perry. We, we oh, have, so, so it's a very wide range of guests, and, and it's a science-based talk show. By the way, it, though it's in its fourth season, it was the first ever science-based talk show on television. Huh. And, and we didn't do that with that in mind. It just sort of turned out that way. There's Lance right now. So, so what would you talk about with Lance? Well, that's a good question. So what, the way the talk show works is I bring people who you've heard of, and I sit them right down, and, and we talk about ways science have touched their lives. So in his case, it was about uh, energy and converting energy of the body into bicycles. And yes, we weren't going to leave the, the controversy the untouched. The enhancing drugs. Right, right, right. So I'm not talking about drugs. was that controversial. We just said, well, how do drugs enhance? Right. That, there's science in that. There's and chemistry in that. Did he answer? To the extent that he would have that answer. And then in studio, we bring in people, when we finally cut the show, we bring in people who have academic expertise on this. And so. Plus, I have a co-host who's a professional stand-up comedian. Who I think of them as a valve of levity, and my academic is a valve of gravity. And I have a steering wheel, and I sort of balance the show so that you have a consistent delivery of of of, of fun, enlightenment, and entertainment. Hmm. Very cool, Dr. Tyson. Let's take yeah. a look uh, at Star Talk. You have all of these variables that come in to this sport that that. People don't necessarily think about it. I don't this. think about it at all. No, you see. It's just your bicycle. Right. Well, it's, it is, look, it's, it's, I tell people this all the time. It's, it's a marathon meets a chess match meets NASCAR meets, mm. you know, That's a good NASCAR. politics. Interesting. Yeah. So, so you get, so uh, plus on Star Talk, the celebrities will get a chance if they have a geek underbelly. Really? That, that wouldn't otherwise be revealed in anything else they do. Like Star, Star Talk is a geek safe space. Really? Okay? So, for example, with Kareem Jabbar, yeah. uh, I didn't know that, you know, we know he's been in a couple of movies. He was in Airplane and, and in a Bruce Lee film. But I didn't know he actually wanted to be an actor after he got out of the NBA. And I said, well, dude, you're 10 feet tall. What, who are you going to play? <laughs> right? And he said, I want to be Chewbacca. And I said, of course. <laughs> of course. That would have been perfect. That would have been perfect. Is it over? Think for, of I that. Mean, you never they didn't let know. Him do it. Right. So this, this is kind of the geek. In a geek safe space, people can end up speaking this way. And, and so Star Talk is a, it's a celebration of all the ways science has touched our lives and even the lives of people you care most about. So and like Katy Perry, like mm -hmm. how like how has science. Well, so then we learn about how science has influenced journalism over the years. And technology. It's not just science, but technology. Yeah. Just, just just everything that scientists, engineers, and technologists have brought to bear on gotcha. civilization, how is your life different because of it? And so we talk about this, and we talk about how their lives have been touched. Mm. And so that's what Star Talk is. It's, 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 a, it's, it's, it's a, a clash. Well, not a clash. It's a, it's a tapestry of science and pop culture. Well, heads up. This is not a geek safe space. Because of uh, <laughs> obviously, <laughs> but I do have a couple of quick questions. I know you'll know the answers. What's that? Speed of light is how fast? Uh, uh, 186,282 <laughs> miles per second. Per second, and it's not just a good idea; it's the law. It's the law. You're not getting around <laughs> it. You can get yeah. you can get to the moon in less than two seconds. Uh, yeah, 1.3 seconds. Are you ever bored? Are you ever bored by the International Space Station? Uh, I think it, it is the largest thing human beings have ever built, ever. And it's floating in space, orbiting at 18,000 miles an hour. How could you possibly get bored with that? Is it the biggest? Uh, are you bored with the pyramids? Well, are you bored with the Eiffel Tower? Well, I, okay. That's just sitting there. Are you bored with the Empire State Building? I'm about to debate Dr. Tyson. No, no, no. I'm yeah. saying. I'm nervous. I'm, saying, I'm, saying, so Dr. Tyson, I'm just saying. A couple of things. It's not bigger than the Empire State Building, right? It's what not. Is? The International Space Station. It's not as big. It is the. Um, no. Yeah, no, it's not. It's, it's right. the size of right. a, I'm of right. a field. Don't correct okay. Dr. Tyson. Oh, I just okay. did. Dr. Okay. Tyson, one other thing. Because okay. I, I, I was thinking about your mentor for a while was Dr. Uh, Carl Sagan. Right. No, we, we had some encounters that for me were influential, but if you use the word mentor, it would overstate it. Overstate. It's not like we chilled and had beer. and No, it's not. wasn't that relationship. Did he try to recruit you at one point? Yeah, yeah, out of high school. So oh, he, yeah, there he goes. I remember I, I, once I was in 17. He said, you know, what we're doing in space right now is we're really hanging around. <laughs> he, he, said, he said that. Like, we're not going to the moon anymore. Oh, oh okay, sure, sure, sure. So, so, yeah, you want to go somewhere. So you could be bored with the space station because it's boldly going where hundreds have gone before. Yeah. Right, just in orbit around the Earth. And you want to you go somewhere. And I agree. 
Yeah, take me to the moon, Mars, he and beyond. He wants to go to Mars. Oh, yeah, to I to totally. But she wants to send me. You, can, you don't blame the space station for not taking you to Mars. You say space station is a thing, and now we have another thing. Well, who do I blame? And you Pre do it all. President? You blame us. No. Yeah. A president. No, 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 Congress. No, no, no. That is being culturally lazy to blame your leaders when you elect your leaders. Okay, I'm sorry to scream at your microphone. <laughs> we, we, it's a democracy. You elect people into office and then you complain about them? Well, no, yeah. Excuse me. That's part of the you, system. You, you put the obligation on them to fulfill what our collective dreams are. And if our collective dreams are not moving the frontier of science, technology, engineering, and math, it will not happen at the government level. Dr. Tyson. If, and, and if you make it a priority, yeah. you elect people into office that will then do that. And you know what that brings? It brings our health, it brings wealth, and it brings security. So scientists are not, you know, yes, we're a special interest group. You know why? Because our special interest is the health, wealth, and security of this country. Look, I'm all on board, but you know that that's not debated publicly, forcefully anymore. It's the space not. program is like the number 29th hundredth on the list of issues that they talk about in a presidential campaign. And meanwhile, people are needing the satellite photos of hurricanes, oh, and right. you're using technology, and you find, where's grandma's house? GPS is telling me where grandma's house is. Oh, I don't need space. I have my cell phone and GPS. <laughs> you need space. <laughs> it's like, please, you know. All right, here. here's something, here's something to what's cool that? things down. What's your favite red wine? Favorite? Oh, thank uh, <laughs> You're a big, you're a connoisseur. Yeah, I, I, I just had a, a very delightful bottle uh, last night night of uh, Clos Saint-Jacques from Burgundy. Is it, um, yeah. I, I like Clos Saint-Jacques, uh, but there are other, I like Burgundy. If I had to pick a place in the world, Burgundy, lately. Listen, it, he's, so, he's this, uh, th th those this at all. man, what, what? there's no <laughs> limits to what he can do <laughs> and talk about. Can, can I say just something yeah. real quick? Yes. Um, just because this is, I, this past weekend is probably the last weekend that my latest book will sit at number one on the New York Times bestseller list, oh, but, it was, but it was number one at all. I mean, that the science book can make the bestseller list, we all celebrate, that for, to get the number, it was number for 10 out of the last 20 weeks. But now it's, it's time has passed, and now Hillary's book is coming in, and yeah, yeah, yeah. That, Astrophysics. For people in a hurry. For people in a hurry. <laughs> That's <Yeah>. us. That's, <laughs> no, no, so I'm just saying, uh, a list that's so dominated by political pundit books and diet books and celebrity tell-alls and athlete memoirs, for a science book to be anywhere there, I think is a hope, whoever wrote it, doesn't matter whether I wrote it, that it's a hopeful sign that maybe people's priorities you wrote are, are ready to shift. You wrote it! <laughs> Dr. Saying. Tyson, we love you. We love having you on our show. Star Talk is on what time on NetGeo? Uh, 11 p.m. Check your local listings, of course, but uh, 11 p.m. on NetGeo. It's, it's a nighttime talk show. There it is. Nighttime uh, talk minus show. the band. No <laughs> band. You got a comedian. No, yeah, comedian. No, comedians are, are great, and it depends on the show how we match that up. Oh, All did right. you hear about the people saw a UFO flying around Manhattan this weekend? Okay. No, take a look at this picture. I think sure. we have it. Mm -hmm. uh, I think this was a stunt to promote Star Trek. I took oh. this picture. <laughs> no are kidding. Are you sure that like you're not so that, saying things? Cool. No, that they were dragging a, uh, a, a USS Discovery. Huh. Under a helicopter. Very really neat. Cool. For about two seconds, oh, there's I, a thought helicopter it, up above. Yeah. I thought it was yeah. a UFO. Do right. you believe in ET life? If you don't know what it is, it's a UFO. That's what the U stands for, unidentified. Unidentified. Wow. That doesn't, doesn't mean it's, it's an alien from space coming to suck our brains out. You two have to stop talking. I got to get ready for Paul okay. Ryan.